So, hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for yet another episode of our Internacional career mode here on FIFA 17. Today we are going to be concluding the transfer window, so moving into deadline day of the transfer window and also playing at two games at the end of it, but the transfer activity is going to be the most important factor because I think we're going to be making four transfers potentially in this episode. We definitely need to bring in a winger and you guys voted on that last time, I'll give you the results on that in a moment. We'll try and bring in Andrew Robertson as a left back as well because he was voted uh, to go from Hull which was obviously our old team in this save to Internacional and we're also going to try and bring in two depth players, two young players. Last time though we played our first two games of the season playing in the uh, sort of the Italian Community Shield if you like. We actually managed to win that against Juventus. We also brought in Vincent Cosielo as well as an attacking midfielder and Jason Vargas uh, who was our first signing. Now last Last episode, I gave you guys the opportunity to vote for which winger you would like me to sign. There were five different options. We had Marco Piacca, Angel Correa, Domenico Berardi was one of them, and then as well as that, Thomas Lamar and Bernardo Silva. You guys made your choice. I gave you guys the opportunity to vote in a poll in the top right of the screen last episode, and I can confirm that the player that won the vote in the end, in a pretty decent, a pretty decent victory in all honesty, was Domenico Berardi, the Sassuolo winger, who we have actually used briefly on this channel in the Leicester career mode save on FIFA 16 in the third season I think it was and he was very good then. He's 85 rated right now. I suppose it makes more sense because he's based in Italy as well so it's a relatively realistic transfer although I think he used to play for Juventus. First thing we're going to do though in this episode before we hear back from Sassuolo about Domenico Berardi is going to make a new bid for Andrew Robertson. I am willing to put Chana Erkin on the line. He's the final fullback really that I'm willing to sell out of the players that we've got. We've already tried D'Ambrosio and we've already tried uh, one of the other fullbacks as well. So we're going to offer six and a half million pounds plus Erkin who's worth about 4.3 for Andrew Robertson of Hull City. The final player we're going to take from Hull City. This episode may take some concentration to keep up with because we're going to be doing lots of different things at the same time. What we are going to do is bring in another centre back, a backup centre back. We've got Presnel Kimpembe of Paris Saint-Germain. We've got Clement Longley of Athletic Bilbao who we actually thought about signing for Hull uh, but Bilbao nabbed him before we could sign him and Issa Diop as well of Toulouse so all French players I do believe another thing we're going to do quickly because I've uh, that this is something again that I mentioned last time is inquire for some defensive mids and um, once again we've quite we've got quite a few on the shortlist. So we've had some evaluations come back from the respective clubs. Paris Saint-Germain would consider a bid in the region of eight and a half million pounds for Presnel Kimpembe. Uh, Athletic Bilbao have set a 12 million pound price tag for Clement Longley and Toulouse have done the same for Issa Diop. It is of course though now the day before deadline day and things are getting a little bit tight. We haven't heard back from Sassuolo about Domenico Berardi yet. We haven't heard back from Hull about the, the most recent Andrew Robertson bid. We've still got to make some bids for some centre-backs and defensive mids. What we are though going to do is, for now, make some bids for some centre-backs. So we're not going to make an £8.5 million bid for Presnel Kimpembe. We will make a £5.5 million bid though for the French centre-back. We'll make a bid of, I think, £8 million for Clement Longley here of Athletic Bilbao. And then for Issa Diop, we'll do the same as well for him because we're running out of time, to be honest with you, and I think anything lower would genuinely be rejected. As we move on to the 31st of August we've just got an absolute flood of, of bids come in. Right so first of all we've got a transfer offer here for Andrea Ranocchia 2.7 million pounds from Bologna no we're going to ask for his valuation in fact we'll ask for a bit more so we'll slap a three and a half million pound price tag on Andrea Ranocchia. Not great news in terms of the wingers. Monaco have rejected our bid for uh, Thomas Lamar because they're not interested in uh, the player so I assume that's the reason why they haven't accepted the bid for Bernardo Silva. Southampton have I've actually accepted the bid for Angel Correa, but obviously he wasn't the player that was uh, voted for in the bid. Sassuolo are actually interested in Ilchich, but they want more money. Let's go 25 and a half million plus Josip Ilchich and see what they say about that. Hull City have rejected the bid for Andrew Robertson, and again it's a similar one to Sassuolo. They just want more money. Okay, we probably need to bump that up by well, well let's let's go eight million. 
We'll bump that up by one and a half mil. So we'll go eight million pounds plus Chana Erkin. This is probably the most stressful deadline day I've ever been involved in ever, given we've got four transfers to do. And now we've got flipping players getting bids from other teams. ASSE have made an eight and a half million pound bid for Issa Diop, which I think is 500k more than we bidded for. Bologna have come back with a valuation of 13 million pounds for Adam Nodge, who's one of the defensive mids we're looking at. Deportivo Cali won five million pounds for the 72 rated youngster Kevin Balanta. Salerno won 3.9 million pounds for Moses Auger, who's 71 rated and I think 21 years of age. Frank Kessi, well, At Atalanta don't want to sell him to us, which is fair. So we'll probably still make a bid. Leon won 3.9 million pounds for Lucas Tuzar, and then we've just got some random rescheduled things going on. We'll slap 7 million on the table first of all and see what Bologna reply to, uh, or how they reply to that. Salerno want barely anything for this guy, and I'm pretty sure he's still got 80 potential actually as Moses Auger. Uh, we'll make a 2 million, 2.5 million pound bid for Moses Auger. And then finally, Lucas Tuzar. Leon wanted 3.9 million pounds for him, so we're going to offer 2.5. Six. We'll offer 2.6 million pounds for the French central midfielder. We've got a whole load of transfer offer unacceptable so far. So this isn't great. This isn't a great start. Um, they are not interested in selling um, Tuzar for that little price, uh, our Leon. So we're going to have to make an improved bid there. Atalanta want more money for Frank Yannick Kessie, although we offered £3 million, which is relatively close to 4.2. Bologna, though, we're obviously trying to sign Adam Nodge off them, and they're trying to sign Andrea Ranocchia off us. And they decided to match the evaluation or the £3.5 million price tag we put on the Italian centre-back. So that's all good. Ranocchia's leaving. That's more money in the kitty. We're not going to be signing... Issa Diop because Toulouse have already accepted another offer from a different team. Athletic Bilbao have rejected our bid for Clement Longley because they want more money. And Paris Saint-Germain have rejected our bid for Presnel Kimpembe as well. Sassuolo have also rejected our bid for Domenico Berardi. And Hull have rejected our bid for Andrew Robertson. So it is just flatline rejection from everyone. Let's get let's go 33.5 million pounds plus Ilchich, which is extortionate to be quite honest with you. And it only leaves us £18 million to do the rest of our transfers, but we'll just have to cross that bridge when we get there. Time for another bid for Andrew Robertson. Let's say £11 million. They have to accept that surely for the Scottish left back. And we're going to offer £9 million for Clement Longley because I'm not overpaying for these guys. These are... You know, if they happen, they happen. If they don't, they don't. There's no point overpaying for these guys, whereas with Berardi, we do actually need him. Same for Andrew Robertson as well. So, we're now going to make a £3.3 million bid for Lucas Tuzar, a £3.5 million bid for Frank Yannick Kessie, a £3.3 million bid for Moses Auger of Salerno, and finally, a £9 million bid for Adam Nodge, although I don't think we're going to be able to afford him, given the extortionate prices we're having to pay at the moment for Berardi and Robertson. Right. Right, good news, absolutely sort of everywhere in at least a lot of places. Right, Lyon have accepted our £3.3 million bid for the Frenchman Lucas Tuzar. Atalanta have accepted our £3.5 million bid for Frank Yannick Kessi. And Salerno have accepted our bid for Moses Auger. Bologna have, re have rejected our bid for Adam Nodge. We can't afford him given the other transfers we've got to do. Let's just, we'll just leave that, we'll just delete that message. Athletic Bilbao have accepted our bid for Clement Longley, the centre-back, who would become our backup centre-back, whereas PSG have rejected our bid for Presnel Kimpembe. We're probably going to leave that one as well, so we'll delete that message for now too. So these are the ones that we're going to continue negotiations with. Sassuolo have finally accepted our bid for Domenico Berardi of £33.5 million plus Josip Ilcic, which is great news. And Hull have accepted our £11 million plus Chana Erkin bid for Andrew Robertson. And great news across the board, we've got contract offers accepted absolutely everywhere. But let's bring in Domenico Berardi as the first of the transfers. And obviously we've got to evaluate where we are money-wise as well, and what we can actually afford. What we are though going to do, very much the first transfer we're going to make here, is Domenico Berardi coming in from Sassuolo to Inter Milan for £33.5 million pounds plus the Slovenian centre-forward Josip Ilcic. So Domenico Berardi joins Inter Milan as the biggest transfer that we've had, I think, 
in uh, in this series so far. I think he's worth. I think we bought him for one and a half million pounds more than we bought Cozielo for. So I think that breaks the the club record transfer fee. On top of that one, it's another player coming in from Hull City. Andrew Robertson will be joining the side for eleven million pounds plus Chana Erkin the Turkish left back and once this deal is done we've got 7.3 million pounds left in transfer budget but look at the amount of wages we've got that's very 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 skewed I know a lot of people have said that this isn't a realistic transfer because British players don't go abroad very often but a it won the vote and b Joe Hart plays in Italy, so why can't Andrew Robertson? So for those that forgot in terms of the attributes of Andrew Robertson from his days at Hull City, he's not been gone for very long, has he? He's only been missing for about three or four episodes, and he's now back in the colours of Internazionale. Here he is, the 24-year-old left-back with 83 potential as well, let's not forget. Here, though, is the man who's broken our transfer record fee, I do believe. Domenico Berardi, let's check out his attributes as well, and they are absolutely ridiculous. Huge amounts of pace, 91 sprint speed, 90 agility, 88 acceleration, 88 ball control, 88 dribbling, 88 penalties as well. So he's definitely going to become our dedicated penalty taker. Good long shots, passing, finishing, crossing, stamina and attack position. Just quickly going to give you a bit of information that I've actually had to seek out myself because I didn't get an email about this and I was wondering what had happened to the deal. Um, Andrea Ranocchia, the bid or the deal for him to go to Bologna has fallen through because he rejected the offer. He didn't want to go to Bologna, basically. First thing, then, we are going to do is bring in Clement Longley. Now, this is £9 million for the Athletic Bilbao um, centre-back. He's going to be coming in and 25k in wages as well, which leaves us with £5.3 million. So Clement Longley becomes our third transfer of deadline day. The man we wanted to sign for Hull City, and we ended up signing Jer Jerry Son Just, I think it was, instead. I think it was, we, uh, yeah, when we signed Jerry Son Just, we were trying to sign this guy, and this Adiop, and um, he snubbed us to go to Athletic Bilbao instead. But this time, he will be joining us, and he'll be signing for Internazionale. And then, the final one. The final centre mid. This is really the tricky one, uh, to be quite honest with you, because I feel like all of these deals could happen in real life, so the realism factor isn't there too much. Uh, the transfer sums are pretty damn similar, in all honesty. I think the one the one that I know what I want to do, I know exactly what I want to do. I want to sign Moses Ogier, because he's 100% the one that nobody's ever heard of before. Lucas Tuzar and Frank Yannick Kessie have probably been signed before, whereas nobody knows who the hell this guy is, and that's what we love. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to sign Moses Ogier from Salerno. I do apologise to those that suggested Frank Yannick Kessie and Lucas Tuzar because I did see them in the comments section. They were very, very good suggestions in fairness, and you never know, they may come in at a later date. But for now, we're going to sign Moses Ogier from Serie B side Salerno. So then, in case you were wondering, here is Moses Ogier. This is him, and look at him. 95 stamina. Oh my god, he's just going to run around for hours and hours on end and not get tired. He's Kante. He's literally Kante. I wish, to be fair, what I do wish he had was a little bit more strength. If he had anywhere near like 75 strength, he'd be really, really good. But that stamina's ridiculous. Really good balance. Decent speed and agility, to be honest with you. He's only 22, so he's going to grow a little bit in terms of that. His long shots and shot power aren't too bad as well. Dribbling and ball control isn't too bad. We will try and train him, though, a little bit. I think we'll train him on his passing, so he's a little bit more of an all-rounder. Maybe a bit more on his defensive stats as well, so he can really be that kind Kante style player and the final player that we're going to look at in terms of the signings we've made in this transfer window is Clement Longley and again he's just a pretty stock standard defender to be quite honest with you gonna come in be a decent backup he's got about 83 potential as well so he will grow got some good defensive stats but we'll of course train him some more on those uh, because obviously slide tackling is lacking a little bit. And his passing and ball control is actually pretty good as well. So he's a bit more of a classy centre-back. Just quickly, just it's, it's relatively irrelevant, but it might, it might be something that people are interested in. One of the players that we didn't sign, Frank Yannick Kessie of Atalanta, might well be going to Bordeaux. So good luck to him. Well, this is a real kick to the teeth. There's only one hour of deadline day left, so I know this isn't going to happen, this deal. But we have had a bid come in for Marco Andreoli. And 
and it's actually above his valuation. Why? Deadline day then is done, and no, we did not get to sell Marco Andreoli, unfortunately, but it has still been a very impressive, to be honest with you, deadline day. Was not expecting to get all the transfers that we needed to, to do done. Right, it is time for the first game of today's episode, and it's a big one away from home against Napoli in the second game of the Serie A season. You can see the squad in the background as well. Robertson is making his debut, Domenico Berardi is making his debut, and new signings Clement Longley and Mos Moses Auger are on the bench. There he is, Andrew Robertson in an Internazionale shirt. That's a very strange sight, to be fair. I didn't expect that to be so weird. Now to Robertson, now to Brozovic. Here's Domenico Berardi trying to get some space, going to get away from Gulam, puts the ball into the box towards Gabriel, goes for the acrobatic, it's fallen to Perisic and is deflected wide. Now then, here comes Ivan Perisic trying to work some space. It's Ivan Perisic with the shot, good shot and good save though from Rui Patrizio, sort of straight at him really, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, but Robertson again winning the ball off Lucas Moura. He's got him in his pocket at the moment as the Scotsman. Oh, that's through there towards how Mario goes for the shot, but it's a very, very poor effort, really. Here comes Gabriel trying to get away from Koulibaly. He's done that. Great save, though, from Rui Patrizio. That's probably the best chance of the game, and mainly just because it was a good save. Great bit of play from Gabriel to get away from Koulibaly, though. We've changed the mentality to counter-attacking, which... Should get people going forward a little bit quicker, I'm hoping. Here comes Gabriel, though, trying to take people on on his own. He's got support here from Cosielo, and that is the goal that we needed. Two minutes into the second half, and Vincent Cosielo opens up his Internazional account at his new club. It's his first goal since his £32 million transfer from Hull City, and the Frenchman gets us going in this game. All started off, though, by a great bit of play from Gabriel, going past Tonelli, I think, the defender. And they were queuing up. It was actually Perisic uh, with the dummy. To be fair, he could have finished it himself, the Croatian. But Kozielo sweeps it into the bottom corner. Can try and use some pace. Can he get away from Jorginho? Yes, he can. Great bit of play from the Italian. And he's still going. Is Domenico Berardi. He's got some support from Ivan Perisic. And the shot is blocked in the end. Is Brozovic. That's... Through towards Cosielo, and it's a great save from Rui Patrizio. That was almost a brace for the Frenchman with the side foot. I don't really, if he didn't know anything about it, did Patrizio, but it's hit him in the face. Vargas in towards Hahn. He can't find the German. We do still get the three points against the very, very challenging side being Napoli. So 1 0 victory thanks to that man there. Vincent Cosielo. Rui Patrizio could only pick out so many saves to prevent us in the end, and we do grab our first win of the Serie A season. Here's your ratings then. Man of the match for Gabriel, who got the assist, of course, for our one and only goal. And obviously the man who scored that goal got a good rating too. Vincent Cosielo with an 8.3. So it's now time for today's second game of the episode, the final game of today's episode as well, at the San Siro at home against Sampdoria. I realise the squad is exactly the same as the one that we played against Napoli, and I do realise that with the squad depth that we have, we should obviously be rotating the squad quite a lot, but we have got Champions League and Cup games coming up soon, where we will be able to actually rotate the squad a little bit more. They may well have Ed Air up front as well, who obviously was at Internazionale, in the first two seasons of this save on loan from Sampdoria so he might he might be playing against the team that he spent his uh, his last two seasons on loan with there is Ed Air alongside Luis Muriel that could be quite a difficult attack force to keep under wraps all down the line there for Prayet but again Andrew Robertson has done a very good job he he had honestly I'd, apart from Valkvist against Ronaldo in uh, in whole career haven't seen many fullback performances where They've actually pocketed the winger so well. Perisic there just spreading the play, uh, play to Berardi. Good overlapping run from Santon. That's in towards how Mario, who goes for the shot. Great save from Viviano. That's a good challenge there from Brozovic. And it's into Kozielo, who goes for the shot. Great effort. The shot power behind that was astonishing. What a save from Viviano. Really wound up that shot, did, uh, did Vincent Kozielo. That's a great reverse ball now through to Robertson. Cosielo's on the overlap, back towards Robertson again, it's gone through to Gabriel, trying to go for the reverse ball, now back to Gabriel again, and it's into the back of the net, great finish from the Brazilian on his left foot, and that is 1-0 in this game, 22 minutes gone, there was a bit of luck in that attack in all honesty, a few lucky bounces, but it fell to Gabriel, and he swept the ball into the bottom corner for his first goal of the series, and Cosielo's back in his natural habitat, getting assists once again. 
That's towards the box. And Handanovic, I tell you what, if Preyer had actually got his head to that, we'd be conceding. Because Handanovic came, decided against it, and I didn't press a button because I was just... I just assumed Handanovic would come and claim it. So time for the second half then to get underway. We've got a decent lead going into the second half. That 1-0 advantage from Gabriel's goal. We have got to watch out because Sampdoria have got a probably more prominent attack than we've seen out of any of the Italian league games so far, which says a lot really given we've played Napoli, who obviously have a very decent attack and we probably saw more already from Sampdoria than, than we did from Napoli but this is a good chance for Berardi to double our advantage it's a great save though from Viviani or Viviano sorry and I have no idea how that hasn't gone in because he's literally that's an incredible save uh, wide to Robertson Brozovic continues his run Robertson's continued his run as well. It's Andrew Robertson and it's just wide. The keeper didn't even move and that really should have been a goal in my opinion for Robertson but of course it was the left back in that situation but surely a second goal is coming. Ball down the line here towards Ed there. Good cut back but Jimenez easily heads that one clear but Mario with a really really lackadaisical pass. Oh this is terrible defending and it's in to the back of the net from Sampdoria. I think it's Ed there with the goal is it? No it's not. It's uh, Torreira who came on as a substitute. It's poor defending from me. My positioning was poor, although there weren't really enough bodies, to be honest with you. It was just Jimenez, who obviously just, yeah. It's, it's shocking defending from myself, but now Sampdoria have got the bit between their teeth as well. Oger, though, with a great interception. It's his first piece of play since coming on as a substitute. Robertson trying to fire that down the line. He has done towards Perisic. There's a man over. It's Caprari. Benega's there for the sweat and Benega's there for the goal and it's 2-1, it's changed in an instant already. Ever Benega, the substitute, has come on and got us the lead back. Gianluca Caprari with the assist. It's suicidal defending from Sampdoria as well because they just didn't need to dedicate that many players forward. Moses Oger starts it all off with the interception, the ball down the line and we've got the lead back just five minutes after we lost it and now sure, we've got to try and hold on to it now. Oger with the challenge, but Sampdoria have still got the ball, ball over the top there towards Araujo, Robertson not really watching but he's got the ball back now and he can pump it long. It's towards Caprari, Chester down towards Perisic and that is the end of the game. It is a 2-1 victory and a very, very dramatic final 10 minutes of the game. Sampdoria equalising and then Eva Benega off the bench coming on to replace Vincent Cozielo gets the winner. Here's your ratings. Marcelo Brozovic is the man of the match for today. 8.6 rating for him. 8.5 as well for Gabriel. 8.4 for Cozielo. Good ratings too for Davide Santon. For Caprari, who of course got the assist for the winning goal. And the man who scored the winning goal, Eva Benega off the bench. So that then brings to a close an extremely hectic episode of Internacional Career Mode here on FIFA 17, four deadline day transfers. And on top of that, a win against Napoli in the league and an extremely hectic win against Sampdoria in Serie A as well. We'll be back to three games per episode for next time or from next episode onwards until the January transfer window. And we'll also be starting our Champions League campaign with a game against Norwegian side Rosenborg in the first group stage match of European competition. That is the end of this episode, apart from the fact you can now see the Hall of Fame in the background as well. And if you've got any more suggestions for stats to add to the Hall of Fame, then drop that in the comments section as well. I would love to hear them. On top of that, you can now vote for your player of the episode. In the top right of the screen, there will be a poll and you guys can vote for the player that you thought was the best player in this episode. And they'll play every single game of the next one. So they'll play all three games of that one. Of course, Davide Santon was the first player of the episode winner of this entire series. So shout out to him and hence he played both games of today's video. If you have enjoyed this video though, make sure to smack a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel as well because support recently has been stupendous. 30,000 subscribers was hit recently. I just want to say a massive, massive thank you for that. And by the time I've uploaded this, we've probably already hit 31,000, which is just, just insane. I can't even fathom it, to be quite honest with you. So honestly, thank you all so, so much for the support recently. It's just been absolutely insane. Nothing, like, nothing I've ever, genuinely ever, ever experienced before. Views, likes, comments, nice comments, all that sort of stuff. It's just incredible. So I want to thank you guys so much. You're the best, fan, you're the best subscribers, fans that I could ever possibly hope to have. Um, but it has been an absolute pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy.
yourselves and goodbye. Yo, biddy bang, biddy boo. Man can't fuck with a lot of them crew. Put one, two, nine holes in the queue. Wanna ride on me, you better change that route. I'm a lyrical animal straight out of the zoo. Big mic, man, big like big zoo. 15 going OC on my own, done it all alone. I never been a bring true. KYE, the hardest YG, my G, but I know he kicks like on food. Try me, you must have won some.